And um, we're going to stay on that page all day today, and we're going to complete that page. We'll never come back to it, so we're going to complete it all in one day today. Write down the following. M equals slope equals rise over run equals delta y over delta x equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 uh, equals, uh, we could say, pitch equals grade equals, uh, how about um, rate of change? Rate of change. Okay, I think those are all the names of slope you need to know. Uh, pitch, this always deals with roofs. Grade, this always deals with roads or land. And uh, this is always given as a fraction, and this is always given as a percent. Okay. Okay. Make sure you have all that written. There are three scenarios um, you know, when we are finding slope. Okay, so when we're trying to find slope of a line, there's three scenarios and there are three tools. Now, what is the slope of a line? Let's drop our pens and pencils for just a minute, okay? I draw this line right here. And I ask you, what is its slope? I'm asking you to give me a numerical value for basically the angle at which it you know, ascends or descends. It's not really the angle as much as it's the numerical value. And, and really, rise over run is one of the most apt descriptions here. Because if we think about this, if I rise one, two, three, four, if you're like going to the movies with a crane, just I'm rip sorry. it. Just rip it, dude. I'm cool, man. Just go okay, for it. Okay, just make it true. You're good, man. I'm messing with you again. <laughs> You're fun to mess with often. Of course. Yeah. Okay, look up here, please. I rise one, two, three, four. I run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have a rise over a run of four over nine. What's interesting here is if I rise again, look at this. If I rise one, two, three, four, make it about right there. And I run, I should be about exactly nine places again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there I am again. That's what the whole point is. Is I can rise four, run nine. Rise four, run nine. And I'm back on my line all the time. Because that is the measurement, you know, that we can give a vertical over horizontal value of what the change in the trajectory of that line is. So what's the slope of a horizontal line? Okay, everyone? Zero. Okay. Zero. What's the slope of that table? Zero. Is that pen moving? No. Zero. The horizontal line. Horizontal surface. Okay. Horizontal surface, no movement. Okay, vertical. What's its slope? Up and down. Zero. Up and down, what's its slope though? Um, Undefined, okay? So last time we met, right here, we drew a, a chart, horizontal, vertical, and we set an example and a graph and an equation. At the bottom, we had the slope. We said the slope of a horizontal line was zero, and the slope of a vertical one was undefined. That's in your basics notes, okay? So we're going to be talking and teaching you about slope today, and we're gonna go on a little field trip, okay? You guys go cool on field trips? Mm -hmm. Part of the quiz today. First thing I want you to do is keep writing with me. There's three different scenarios. What is a scenario? What does that mean, the word scenario? Do you know, or is that too old fashioned for you? Scenario is a situation. Situation, there's three situations, very good. And in each of those situations, there's a unique tool we use to find the slope. So there's three scenarios and three tools to finding slope. And so the first one is scenario one. This is how we're gonna organize this. If you're gonna write your little guts out right now, we're gonna do this one, then we're gonna go on a field trip, come back, do two more, okay? So the first, Scenario is, um, let's see here. 
we have what we call the given. And we are going to be given two points in the problem. Uh, tool used, okay? Now, one of the things I want you to understand is that uh, whatever the tool used is, you gotta memorize it. So tool used, okay? That means you're gonna have to memorize. So whenever I put a red rectangle around something, you know, oh, that means I gotta memorize that for this test. And you do. M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So some of those things on that you know, middle board right there, we're gonna see in our work here. This is one of the names of slope, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Um, example. An example of this kind of a problem would be find the slope of the line passing through the points negative 2, 3, negative 4, 5. Okay? Negative 2, 3, negative 4, 5. Let's go negative five. Next thing, steps. What are my steps for finding the slope of a line passing through these points? Step number one, go ahead and label your two points. Label them x, y, x, y, one, one, two, two. Step number two, write the formula. What formula? M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Step number three, <coughs> plug the points <coughs> in the formula and simplify. Okay. All right. Give you a second to write and then we have you draw. What, what, what was that? What do you mean, what was that? What are you talking about? Uh, like... See this? <coughs> See this right here? Yeah, I can. Can I make it in that garbage back there in the corner? Um, okay, well, you don't hit anyone. As long as you don't... Okay, if I hit somebody, too. <laughs> Leave it. We have janitors. Do you, do you want me to okay. do that? No. <laughs> um, look up here. I want you to drop your pens and pencils. We got negative two, three, and we got negative four, negative five, all right? Everybody look at this. And so, I talked this class, and I talked to you guys about brazen serpents. Did we ever talk about mm -hmm. that scripture one day? Right, mm -hmm. small, simple things that make a huge difference, but we fail to do them because they're so simple, we don't think they're gonna save us, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a really easy problem. And you have a number of these problems in your homework tonight, and you have a number of them on the test. So right now I want you to drop your pens and pencils. So that's the first small simple thing I want you to do that's going to make a difference. I told you to do it on day one and if you followed it, it's made a difference for how you've learned this semester. If you haven't followed it, then you're learning the same way you've learned in the past and that's going to slow you down. Okay, watch this. The first thing you need to do in this problem is you need to write these two points on your paper. And after you write them, you need to say, well that's an x-coordinate and that's a y-coordinate and that's an x-coordinate and that's a y-coordinate. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay? And if this is your first, then you say one and one, and this is your second, say two and two. And students say, well, how do you know that's the first point? And I'm like, well, it really doesn't matter. Okay? In fact, if this is your first point, then this is your second, second point, right? It, it will, it, you'll get the same answer. It doesn't matter. You can say this is one and one, and this is two and two. What you can't do is you can't call that x1 and that y2. Mm -hmm. Understand? Because uh -huh. they're an ordered pair. So they're either one and one, or they're two and two, but they can't be one and two. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we good? No? Perfect. Perfect, okay. Now, next thing. You're gonna write the formula. M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. That's what these steps are telling you. Label the points, we just labeled them, X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Then write the formula. Now take these and put them in here. Now, here's the next little thing that makes a difference. What's this? What's this right here, this? Finger. finger. It's my finger. You're the only smart class I've had today. Everyone else, yeah. it's a number one. You're pointing at the roof. I'm like, it's my fetching finger. They're like, oh, <laughs> okay, good job. You got it on the first try. It's my finger, okay? You're gonna take your finger and you're gonna go like this. Small, simple thing. Formula, Y2, 
Where's my y2? Here. What is it? It's negative, negative five. 5. Okay, negative 5. Minus, part of the formula, comes three. down. y1, where's y1? Right here. What is it? It's 3. 3 comes down. x2. Oh, I put a bar. Bar is part of the formula. It comes down. x2. Negative 4. x2, negative 4. Minus, part of the formula. Negative x1, two. go for x1, negative 2. And you have to put that in a parentheses. Okay? And you would be shocked. But can you see how you could maybe forget to bring the negative down, just have negative four minus two? Uh -huh. yeah. Could you see how you could really screw this up? Yeah. Okay? This little dude right here, yeah. use him. Okay? Point it. Go around. Okay? Be thorough. Be organized. So this becomes, what's negative five minus three, everyone? What's negative five minus three? Negative two. Okay, so most of you said negative eight. One of you said negative two. Negative Listen, oh. negative five plus negative three. We change all subtraction to addition. What's going to be on bottom? Negative four. What's minus a negative make? Plus two, okay? Negative five plus negative three makes what? Negative now that does make negative eight. And negative four plus two makes what? Negative two. And a negative or negative makes a? Positive. Negative divided by two makes? Four. And that's the slope of the line passing through those two points. Hard or easy? Easy. Oh, it's fetching easy. But can you see how you can make a stupid mistake? Yes. Uh -huh. Get bitten by a snake and die, get to the other side, and an angel says, you're a dipshiz. <laughs> That'd be kind of weird if an angel said that to you. But, but the point is, right, you get to the other side, like, oh, way to go, moron. I told you to look, right? You wouldn't look. Now you're here with me, okay? Let's go. Come on, you know. Get to hang out with me until your body gets resurrected. Okay, listen. The point is, is that you're taking this test, and you get this problem wrong, and you're going to be ticked off at yourself if you get it wrong because it's all a matter of being organized, right? Hmm. Cool? Perfect. Okay, I want to take one other moment and do something with you interesting here, okay? M. Why is M slope? I already told you S was taken. Did I tell this class this? Mm -hmm. S was taken, okay? The other sciences took S for speed, physics. <coughs> they had S for speed. And so why M? Why does M represent slope? Well, this is like asking, does Adam have a belly button? Like, we don't know, we don't care, okay? It's just inconsequential knowledge, okay? But the bottom line is, is that we gotta memorize that. The letter M represents slope. Now, if it helps you memorize, when you go skiing or snowboarding, you call it hitting the slopes. slopes. And where do you hit the slopes? In the mountains. mountains. And M for mountains, slopes, whatever. If that helps you, you can do that, okay? Rise over run, we just expressed how it's rise over run. We're gonna show you something interesting with that. What is this little triangle Y, triangle X? Triangle is a symbol in what? Geometry. Know? Geometry. Okay, Greek. Okay, and it's delta is what it means. It's, it's, it's actually the symbol's not a triangle, it's called delta. Okay, and so delta y over delta x. And delta means change. change. Very good. The change in y over the change in x. Well, if we change something, we do something different. Well, what, what's a difference in math? It's subtraction. So we, we're looking at the difference in the y values over the difference in the x values. And that's why we get y2 minus y1. We're subtracting those versus x2 minus x1. Pitch. It's just a name for slope that regards to roofs. So we're talking about the slope of a roof, we call it its pitch. Grade. Grade is the name for slope when we apply it in the real world to you know, concrete, roads, uh, land masses, you know, land terrain, all that kind of stuff, okay? Grade, and it's always given as a percent, okay? Rate of change, that's an interesting one. You're gonna see it in your homework tonight, it's gonna kind of throw you for a loop. Uh, you can measure the slope of a line, but what's so interesting is when you're driving down the road, okay, it's a fascinating concept. You're not driving, and if you're going faster than the speed limit, you're not speeding, you're sloping. Yeah, it's kind of not, you know, as exciting as you once thought it was, okay? You're sloping. Like, what does that mean, I'm sloping? Well, there's a rate at which you're changing your location. And the speed, average speed with which you're going is your rate of change. And so we talk about, um, you know, the X value, the Y value, but what we're doing here when we're driving is we're changing our physical location over time, okay? So if we drive, let's think about this, if we drive a distance of 120 miles in two hours, okay, what was our average rate of speed? Can you say the numbers again? Okay, Fetchers, listen. Okay, I don't get pissed at this bunch too much. But I'm looking at you guys, and you're zoning out, and you're looking all over the place. Have I ever come to this class unprepared? Answer me. No. Have I ever come to this class unprepared? No. no. Am I prepared today? Yes. Yes. Are you prepared to learn? Yes. yes. I don't know. You don't look like it. Some of you look like you can't handle 15 minutes of talking. We're going to go on a field trip here in a minute. 
to loosen the blood and, and get things going, okay? You gotta focus on learning right now, all right? So turn your heads and listen to what I'm saying. If you drive 120 miles in a time frame of two hours, what was your average rate of speed? 60 miles per hour, okay? That's your slope. Your slope is 60. It's called your rate of change. And so if a cop pulls you over tomorrow and you're sitting there and uh, you know, you're fiddling around trying to find your you know, license and registration and he comes up, I dare you, I dare you. He comes up and he says, do you know how fast you were going? I'd like you to say, <laughs> I was sloping at 85. You know, just tell me you were sloping. Just do it, man. See what kind of a nutball he is, okay? All right? So you cool? Why are we doing that? What? Why are we doing that? Like, um... Yeah, I want you doing it, man. This is next year. Yeah, but he's going to give you, like, a bigger ticket, so maybe you better not. All right. Okay? I want you to do something with me right now. Draw a graph. Go ahead, draw a graph. Okay? And make, um, let's see here. We're going to have to make six hash marks on each uh, stem. Cool? You can make more if you want. Okay? Now that you've drawn that graph, I want you to plot these two points up here negative two, three, negative four, negative five. Okay? So you plot them on your graph negative one, negative two. Okay? And then I want you to go one, two, three. And then I want you to go negative one, two, three, four. And negative one, two, three, four. All right, and then you can connect them. You can make a line. All right, you can get a straight edge like the edge of your book, or you don't have to. You can just wait <coughs> until you can just draw. It. Okay, you got this. Okay, now that you have it on there, I want you to do something. Okay, I want you to measure with this. What's this? Your finger. Your finger. I want you to measure with your finger the rise between these two dots. So think about this. Look at, look, look. We're right here. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Right here. Agreed? Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to here. Agreed? Uh -huh. Okay, so from there to there, what's our rise? We can count it right here. So do it with your fingers right now. You come up with it on your own. Do it with your finger. Okay? okay don't say it out loud. Do it with your finger. Okay, say woo when you have it. Woo. Say woo when you have it. Woo. Say woo when you have it. Woo. Okay. All right, so what'd you get? Four. Nine. Oh, four. I got ten. Eight. I got. Okay. Look, look, look. Did you graph negative two, three? Look. Negative two, one, two, three, right? And then you graph negative four, one, two, three, four, and negative one, two, three, four, five, right? Right? Yeah. Now watch this. Do you agree mine are right? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay, now watch. We're here. This is one. Everyone. Two. Everyone. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, who got eight? Raise your hand. Yeah, you got it right. It's eight. Your rise is eight. Okay. Now, look up here, please. Look up here. Okay, now look at this. Okay. Run. Run is your horizontal. So I want you to understand something. Rise. Rise means up, down. Up, down. In the English language, rise means to go up. up. Down. Down today, yes. <laughs> okay. Rise in the English language means to go uh, up. up. But in math, it means to go up if you're and down if you're negative. Good job. Sarah has some amount of sugar in her bloodstream. The rest of you are dead today. Okay? Run. Run in the English language means to go forward. Forward. forward but in math, if you're negative, you're going left. And positive, you're going right. Forward. Left, right, forward, backward, sure. Okay. Left and right are relative, but yes, we're good. Okay. You guys listen, it's not a forward and backward, really. But look up here, please. Okay, so between this dot and this dot would be its run. Agreed? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we come up here. How many are we going? Two. Two. Two, two or three? Two. 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 Don't count the hash marks, Ventures. Two. Count the amount of spaces. It's one, 
two, right? This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's eight over two, which equals four. four. Math. Okay. If rise over run <laughs> equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, then they are the same. same. They're the same thing, right? Now, please listen. Do I want you to graph these and do this? No. I want you to use this tool. Mm -hmm. What if they give you fractions for those numbers or decimals, okay? Well, that whole little finger thing, that's going to be rendered a little useless, okay? <laughs> but when they're all integers, whole numbers, right? It, it, the finger thing really works. Okay, you cool? Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Get your butt up. Get your butt up. Come on, we're going on a trip. We're cold hard tripping. Today has released <coughs> new mass guidelines. Okay? We'll see how that works out for us. All right? We're coming? Men go me go, amigos. Oh, oh, oh. Cool. Oh, oh, oh. Amen. Are you serious? Like there's Kyle, come on. Come on, man. This is our way of keeping you awake today. Come on. Come on. Hey, guys, we got to gather around here. Y'all got to see what's going on, okay? <laughs> All right. First thing I'll ask you, okay? This right here. Okay, we're going to put that right. It's going to move for a second, okay? Rachel, where's Rachel? She told me it moved on the table. It moves just for a second because it's the transfer of energy from my hand to the pen. But then that energy dies and dies. she stands still. It's, it's a she, isn't it? Is it? If you want her to I don't know. Your I mean, there you go. depending on the pronouns. So... What's the slope of this banister here? Zero. Zero. It's zero. zero. Absolutely. Okay. Now, is this a banister here too? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's the slope of this one? Well, it ain't zero, right? Okay. If I put it here, will it stay still? No. Should we check it out? Sure. Let's do it. <gasps> ah. Okay. Oh. I'll grab it. Just hit. No. You're good. You're good, man. Stay here. Just get in. It's, it's, it's a slope, man. It's all good. All right. We cool? All right, you want to help me out? Sure. All right, let's measure the height of this step right here. While he's measuring that, I want to ask you guys a quick question. Okay? Is this, uh, is this the slope of this, would it be the, slope, the same slope as the stairwell? No, it should be. It should be, because if this slope is different than this, then as we went down, then this banister would either get shorter or taller, but for it to stay consistently the same, these would have to be parallel lines, and parallel lines, their slopes are the same. They are the same, right? And so, look at this, it, it, it should be. So what would you get for a height? Uh, five and a quarter. Five and a quarter, you are absolutely right. Okay, go, let's measure the, uh, the length, yeah, the, the tread, the steps. Yes, yeah. Going for precision. I like it. <coughs> okay, cool. All right. So one thing that happens, I'm going to show you this, game. Okay? If I hold this right here up against that, um, you can kind of see that there's that little bit of a dip underneath there. Yeah. So let's for, um, so five and a quarter uh, by 13. Let's go, let's go 13. Let's give it that half inch on that roll, okay? So what you do right now, get your, get your phones out, do 5.25, because that's a quarter, 5.25, and divide it by 13. Did you leave your phone in the room? That's cool, that's cool. People like to get unplugged. Okay. Hey, oh, sorry, what's your name? Julia. Oh, Julia. Is, isn't Julia the donut delivery girl you guys call? Did you bring the donuts? <laughs> Julia. Yeah, cool. Hey, it, this is the free hug club. Do you want to hug today? Want to make you feel better? <laughs> sure. Oh, Julia. <laughs> you feel better? Uh -huh. All right, good. Good job. All right, Julia. You're cool. All right, so. See, this is the kind of stuff you do when you're out on dates, man. Just mess with people randomly. Okay. Isn't that the so, girl that keeps us talking? I don't know. All right. So did you 5.25 divided by 13 and a half? Or wait, what did we say? 13? Yeah, just 13. 13. Uh, what'd you get? 0 0.40? Convert that to a percent. What's that? 40%. That's 40%. You know, you guys have a lot of skills. You've developed a lot of skills this semester. I'm asking you all kinds of math questions. You're doing really, really good, okay? So the slope of this stairwell and this banister is 40%. But we usually don't 
communicate it as percent. We would usually do it as a fraction, like a rise over a run, which was five and a quarter over 13. Okay, so 5.25 over 13 would be the slope of this. But that's kind of a weird fraction, right? Because it's got a decimal in it and it's all kind of weird, right? We cool? All right. Um, do you think this is a steep slope, 40%? Is this steep? Yes. How many of you have ever driven over a mountain pass and seen the sign that says steep grade ahead, use lower gear? Raise your hand if you've seen that. Yes. Okay. So grade means? Grade means? Gear. Slope is another name for slope. And, and usually when you see that, there's a number on the sign, isn't there? Is there? Is 10%. There a number? And it has a what? It 10. has a p -p -p percent, right? Because grade's always given as a percent. Okay, this is interesting. Um, so who's ever driven over a mountain pass and, you know, you've had, you know, that steep grade thing happening? Yeah? Okay, so most of you, maybe all mm -hmm. of you. Do you know what the steepest allowable um, grade is on a United States highway? Okay, now not just any street, but a U.S. highway. Because, like, in the streets of San Francisco, we're going to have some pretty steep streets. But on a highway, because you, can, you, can, you have to hit certain speeds, what would that be? Do you know what that percent is? The steepest. 53? 12%? It's 12%. Right? 12 okay. It's 10%. And some non highway related, you know, passes are 12%. Very good. Okay. So what was the what was this what was the percent of this? 40%. That's four times more than the steepest mountain pass. Now I want to ask you, when you've driven over a mountain pass, when you've driven over a mountain pass. Um, it's scary. Is it scary? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of heavy. So, you know, take your foot off the brake for three full seconds, right? One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. Okay. What do you have to do when you get to the end of that? Well, you got to punch that brake because you're building up a lot of mo. What's mo? Momentum. Momentum. That's right. Mo mm -hmm. momentum. Okay. Not mo money. Okay. Momentum. And. If you, it, it, so I want you to think about this. If this was the grade, 40%, and you let it off for three seconds, you'd probably be dead. It's not a joke. This is really? super, super steep, okay? All right, let's talk about roofs. Let's talk about pitch, okay? So this is right here, where I've I got my hands right here, about, about like that. That is the standard pitch of a United States roof, okay? So what do you think that, what do you think that percent slope is right there? Is it less or more than this? Less. less. Okay, you're right. Okay. It's the 412 pitch. Okay, so it's given as a it's fraction. 412. Do 4 divided by 12. What's 4 divided by 12? These guys interrupting our class. 4 divided by 12. Do it on your calculator. Go. One third. One third. Convert that to a decimal. 33.333%. So just a little bit less than this, okay? All right. Hey. Oh, oh, we've been waiting for you three. Oh, perfect. Are you guys, we're here. Are you guys, are you part of the dating club that's helping us with our class today? No. no? Not us. Oh, dang, sorry about that. Okay, all right. Anyways, see, I'm just saying, say stupid things to random strangers. It makes you feel better, okay? And they walk away, they're like, that guy's weird. We're walking away like, you're weird. <laughs> okay, it's all good. Okay, so 33.3%. So here's what's interesting. How do we know that the most common roof in the United States is a 33.3%? Well, I'll tell you how we know. Because when you build a home, you don't build the roof on site. It's built in a truss factory. And so the framing of the roof is called a truss. And there's all these trusses and they put them up there. Well, the number one sold truss in America according to the truss factories, is the 412 pitch. And so we know that that's sold more than any other roof structure, okay? Now, why would people go with a steeper roof? Why would they go with a steeper roof? Yeah? Because so things will slide off. Because like things will slide off, like you, right? If, you're, if you've got, like, aliens or gremlins crawling on your roof, you want to snow. Snow. Or Santa. <laughs> yeah, snow. Snow is a big one, right? We definitely, if snow is falling and it's super heavy and it builds up and up and up and deeper, it could, yeah. the roof could cave in, right? Or leaks, yeah. And so we wanted to slide. Oh, 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 JP. Hey, what's up, guys? Brother Sloop. Hey, hey, does anybody know Brother Sloop? Do I have any of you in class? No. Ah, uh, yeah, man. Zoolander. Like, great class. Like right? Zoolander. What's that? It's a great class, wasn't it? Put you on the spot for that. Okay. All right. Turn around. Right. This way? Yeah. 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 See you. Ah. <laughs> All right.
JP and uh, special brotherhood. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll see you, man. See you. All right. So here's the deal. So you want them to be steeper sometimes because you want snow to come off, right? You want you want better drainage, that kind of stuff. What's another reason that we go with a steeper roof? What's another reason? You think? The architecture of the house. Yeah, it's all about aesthetics, how it looks, right? Like, this looks like grandma's house, right? You go up on the hill with all the fancy homes, and they always have these steeper roofs. It's all about how it looks, okay? All right, come with me. Let's hurry. Let's go. Come on. Hustle, hustle. You don't have all day. Get in here. You got to be in here. You got to be in here, okay? This is being Sorry. funner, so people are going to come in. Oh. Okay. It's already messed up, okay? All right, guys. Um, look over there at the Spory building. Look at that roof. What do you think that, that pitch is as far as percent? What do you think? A little less than 40. A little less than 40? A little bit more than 40, I think. Maybe a little more than 40. I think you're right. I think 50, it's... Uh, I think that could be like 15%. Yeah, it's, it's really close to a 512 pitch, maybe a 612, but I think it's a little under 50%, so it's about 40, 45%. Very similar to the stairwell, okay? Um, look over here to your right at the uh, Clark building. Look over to your left at the Romney building. Um, do the, why don't those have roofs like the Sporty? Um, Probably because of the stuff that's on top of them that has a lot to do with manufacturing. Okay, so go over there. Look over there. There's nothing really on top of that except that pipe, pipe. which that's, there's stuff like that on the other side of the Sporty, too. I mean, you always have to have some kind of ventilation or whatever. So, so I get you. Like over there they have stuff. But my point is, is I mean, is that... Does that have no slope? Is it zero? Is it horizontal yeah, line up top? Zero. Is it zero? No, no, it's, no. It's, it's really not. Okay, look at me for just a second. So if we climbed up over the top of the edges of that building, it, the, it, the roof isn't level with the top of that. It, drops, it down. drops down. Those are banisters all around there. And then there's gravel on top of tar. And that gravel and that tar have a very gradual slope in various areas that go to drains. If, if you didn't, the roofs would collapse with the weight of snow and rain and water. I mean, just build a big bathtub up there, right? You have to have drainage. But why don't they have then, I mean, that looks like that could be problematic, create leaks. You know, why don't they have a big structure that's steep like that, especially in an expensive school like this? Why don't they have a big roof structure like that? The architecture of, like, the shape of the building. Okay, so, so we go back to architecture. It's too um, big. What's that? It's too big. It's too big? It's too wide. The building. It's too wide. Slope to slope. Okay. If you wanted anything to fall off, then you'd have to make a really, really steep roof. Yeah, yeah. I mean, here's the deal. I want you to look at this, okay? Look at my hand right now. Do you know what a footprint is? Yes. Okay, it's when you put your foot in the ground, it leaves a print. Okay, so the footprint of that building is a rectangle. I mean, if that building was alive and it stepped down and then it lifted its foot up, the footprint would be this rectangle. We clear? Okay, so the footprint of the spory is like this. The footprint of the Romney is like this. You could fit probably eight to ten spories or more in the Romney building. We clear? Eight to ten spory footprints fit into the Romney footprint. To make a roof to cover all that area, you would have this enormous structure, which costs a lot of money. Yeah, and that's just a waste of freaking money because so it really, at the end of the day, the answer is it's not feasible. All these construction materials, look over there at the Spory building. How many rooms are up in that roof um, system? Uh, how about zero? Okay, <laughs> there's nothing up there. It's all attic space. There might be some, you know, HVAC, heating, ventilation, air conditioning. There might be some, you know, fiber optics and, you know, stuff for, you know, your technology wiring running up through there. Um, but those two dormers on each end, those aren't windows. Those they're are, vents. yeah, they're vents, exactly. They're to release heat in the summer and, and create ventilation up there. Okay, you guys cool? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, do you think that um, there's slope to this concrete out here? Yes, no? Yes. 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 Really? No. Does it look like it's zero? It could be like a downward grade. Okay. All right. Let's check it with the pen. You guys can stay warm in here. I'll make the sacrifice. They're sacrificing their teacher. Listen, don't move. Don't, don't step. Don't step over it. It's it's a. It, it, I'm messing with you. <laughs> Why you gotta be like that, man? Why you gotta be like that? Open this door. Look. What? All right, so did it have slope? Yes. yes. Yeah. Why did it stay still at first? 
Because you set it like at a specific point and hold on to it till it stayed. Doesn't have enough mass. Yeah, it probably doesn't have enough mass. And, and if you look at this, the way concrete's made, they've brushed it. So these are brush lines that go through. So they're tiny little grooves. So it just sat in a groove and it didn't move. Okay. But I pushed it up. And if it, and if it was, if the slope was coming back towards the building, it would have kept rolling towards the building. But then the momentum of it, it, the slope brought it down. So do you know what percent grade that concrete has? What do you think? Like 2%. 2%. Exactly, 2%. So most concrete is 2% slope, okay? Wouldn't it be negative that right? Negative 2? No. no. Um, we'll works. talk about negative and positive when we go up. All right, let's all go back to the room, okay? Go for it. In the English language. So is that line going up or down? Up. Up, according to you. And so its slope is, you know, positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Yes. It is, whoa, here it comes, whoa, thank you. It's positive, okay? If it's going down, the slope is negative. negative, okay? And that's the thing. So we come back to this line over here. Was it going up or was it going down? Uh, uh, positive or negative? Positive. Positive four, cool? Okay, and that's how we determine positive or negative slope. But in the real world, we'd never communicate slope as positive or negative because it's relative. For the student coming in, they're going up, it's positive. For the student leaving, it's going down, so it's negative. So it's all relative to your approach, right? Okay. All right. Clear as mud. There you go. Let's write down our second scenario. Okay. All right, so what you're seeing today is some, some opportunities of slope in the real world and how it impacts you. Your slope is all around you every day. Okay, you use it as a part of your life on a regular basis. What happened to my black pen? You threw it back there and you never got it. Yeah, it Somebody stole it, man. It didn't break. That one broke. But the one I threw down the stairs, rolled down the stairs, didn't it? Well, the same one. It's brand fetching new, too. Yeah, you want me to use it? No, it's coming. I mean, they have been optional. They have not been optional for me as a teacher. Oh, really? No. And they really haven't been optional for you either. Not in the classroom. In the hallways, all that kind of stuff. In here, no. But now, what did the email say? Read it to us. Tell us of the joy. Pull it up. I just see the header. Mask, optional classrooms, effective February 25th, which is today. And throughout the last two years, BYU-Idaho has faced COVID-19 protocols on accounts of church leaders, regular cons consultation with local health officials, and careful monitoring of local conditions. And since, you know... COVID-19 and its variants have fallen and projections are encouraging. Masks will now be optional in classrooms and most other indoor spaces on campus. However, at this time, masks and physical distancing continue to be required at events such as devotionals, performances, and other large gatherings. But not at football games, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Here you go. Hey! It's so good to see all your faces again. <laughs> it's so good to not have to talk into a plastic shield. <laughs> two years. Two years I've been doing that. It's cool. Really? It's been two years? Two years as of like March something. So it's been like 23 months. I mean, you're a grown adult. You can do whatever you want. I know that. That's true, but. Okay, next scenario. Write these down. Scenario two. Okay, given. The given in scenario two is you're given the equation of a line. Equation of a line. Um, the tool used. Tool used. Y equals mx plus b. Who of you in here, on the count of three, when I say three, have ever heard of y equals mx plus b? One, two, three. Me. Say woo. One, woo. two, three. Woo. 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 You've woo. all heard it. I could tell everybody said woo. Okay, so you've all heard of y equals mx plus b. You've seen it before, okay? So listen, everyone, what's m? What's m? <coughs> slope. It's slope. Okay, good. All right, next thing. Example. Find the slope of the line pat oh sorry of the line with the equation two x plus three y equals negative six. Find the slope of the line with the equation two x plus three y equals negative six. Okay? Steps. 
Uh, basically, it's a one-step process. Solve for y. In other words, get y alone or put the equation in y equals mx plus b form. All those mean the exact same thing. Let me show you what I mean. Drop your pens. Drop your pencils. Come on. Do it now. Hurry. Okay? 2x plus 3y equals negative 6. Please, please listen. Have you seen this equation before? Yes. Oh, yes. And we work with it with Kyle and all of in our groups. And we, we graphed it using uh, plug and chug. We graphed it using intercept method. Okay, so we have seen this equation a lot. Okay? Now, if I want to get y all alone, what do I need to do? We've learned this, we've learned this process in chapter two. What do we do? Subtract 2x from both sides. Oh, good job. I love you guys. Subtract 2x. What you do to one side, do to the other. We cool? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we do that, we end up with 3y equals, right? Because these cancel. Agreed? Yeah. yeah. So here's my original equation, 2x plus 3y equals negative 6. These just canceled. 3y equals. Now, do you want to write negative 2x minus 6 or negative 6 minus 2x? Okay, negative 6 minus 2x. Look up here, please. I want this to be in y equals mx plus b form. So I want the x term to be first or last? First. So how would you write this? Negative 2x minus 6. Minus 2x, oh yeah, something like that. Negative 2x minus 6. Good, good. And that's why we do that, because we want it in mx plus b form. It's not that negative 6 minus 2x is incorrect, but we want it in mx plus b form. Now, I want y all alone. If y is all alone, I have m. Okay, so how do I get y alone? Divided by three. Now, in the past, we have divided this by 3 and this side by 3. Okay, but can we also write 3 over each one of these like that? Yes or no? Yes. yes. And that's what we're always going to do because, again, we don't want y equals mx plus b all over something. We want each term to be individual. mx is a term, b is a term. So we're going to put the 3 under each one. We cool? Cool. Now, this canceled, and you're left with y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 2. Look up here, please. M is the number next to x. What's the number next to x? So what's your slope? Negative two. Negative two thirds. You're done. That's an easy thing. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. It's super easy. Take an equation, put it in y equals mx plus b form. M is your slope. Cool? cool. Finish writing that down. Go. I need to erase the middle board. Are we cool to erase the middle board? Yeah. Get out. Yeah, you know, when I went on a mission, I had to talk to everybody, right? And we went into the MTC, and they read all these scriptures, opening your mouth, you know? And so I was just like, and they ingrained that in me deep. And I was like, oh, you know, if you, if you go serve the Lord and you stay quiet on your mission, you'll be held responsible for all the people you don't talk to. So I was like super scared, like, oh my gosh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to arrive on the other side someday, and I'm going to, you know, be held accountable for all the people I didn't talk to on my mission. So I was, seriously, I was scared. I was paranoid. Like, I had to talk to everybody. And so everywhere I went, everywhere I went, it was in those pictures. I, I looked good. I okay. So, anyways, I, I talked to everybody everywhere I went. Well, when I got home from my mission, and I used to drive my companions crazy because I mean, we'd be on the bus and I talked to people. We'd be on the train, I talked to people. We'd be at the bus stop and I talked to people. And honestly, I baptized a lot of people. I went on my mission to England. Okay, I went on my mission to England. England's a tough mission. And all the people I baptized, I found them all in the streets. Everybody. Because I talked everywhere I went. I talked in the streets all the time. So it was really cool. But when I got back from my mission, I was like, you know, I've spent two years talking to perfect strangers. And I was just like, and I remember before my mission, I'd see a cute girl from a distance and I'd never talk to her. No, oh, I got back from my mission, that all changed. I was like, Screw that, man. I just spent two years talking to perfect strangers. If she looks cute, I'm going for it, man. So I just, I talk to anybody. You know what I mean? That's cool. Like, um, like in your youth years? Scenario three. Okay, so we have one, two, three. Okay, here we go. Scenario three. Write one writing. Scenario three. Uh, again, our first thing is our given. And in this instance, we are given neither two points nor are we given the equation of a line. And uh, the tool used, okay, and uh, our tool used here is rise over run equals m. And so again, um, I told you I would put a red rectangle around everything that you need to memorize, okay? Um, and then we're gonna go with an example again. 
same kind of a format. And our example is find the grade of the river uh, that drops 500 feet over one mile, 5,280 feet um, of horizontal distance. Okay. Uh, what are my steps? All right. Well, these are these are almost kind of ridiculous. Find the rise, find the run, and then place the rise over the run and <coughs> simplify. Um, okay, let's drop our pens and pencils again. Look up here, please. I need you to watch this, right? You gotta trust me. Uh, there's a point in time in which you are wasting time, and right now, if your heads are down, you're wasting your time. Because tonight's assignment, there will be a number of problems that some of you find challenging, but if you pay attention to what I say right now, every tool you need is in those three red boxes, and all you're doing in your homework tonight is finding the slope. slope. That's it. Not intercepts, you're not graphing the line, Okay, you catching me here? You're not graphing, you're not finding intercepts, you're not, you know, plotting dots, you're doing none of that kind of stuff. You're finding the slope every single time. Look up here though, but which tool you use is based on what you're given, what information you're given. So we come back to this problem. Look at this. We use this tool when we're given two points. Notice in this problem, we were given two ordered pairs. Okay, we come over to this problem. And in this problem, we use this when we're given the equation of a line. We were given the equation of a line, okay? And we come to this problem, look at this, and if we read this problem, are you, and think, are you given two points? No. no. Oh, thank you. So many of my students are like, yes, because they see two numbers up here. It's like, listen, people, a point is an ordered pair, and we don't have an x and a y and an x and a y. So we don't have two points. Are you given the equation of a line? Mm -hmm. Nope. And so when you're given neither of those, rise over run is your de facto default tool. And so we determine what is the vertical rise. So in this story about this river, what is the rise? 5,000. What is it? Okay, so we have two numbers. One of them is the rise and one of them is the run. Find the grade of the river that drops 500 feet over one mile of horizontal distance. Okay. 5,280 is the run. 5,280 is the run. Thank you very much. That is correct. Thank you for not saying it's one mile because we can't have one number be in feet and the other number be in miles. All the numbers have to be in the same measurement denomination, right? So you're either going to have to convert 500 feet to some portion of a mile, you know? Okay, look up here. And what's my eyes? 500. Obviously 500. Some people say negative because it says it drops. But I told you, in the real world, that's not going to matter, okay? So in your homework tonight, if it says drops, it won't be negative. But I've always impressed with students that put a negative in front of that, and we never dock them on their homework for it because it's just it's, it's good that they did that. I think it's really cool. But remember, out in the real world, that's relative to your approach, right? And so we'll just leave it as positive. But in this instance, I wrote negative up there. And then it said, this magic word here, it said grade. And when I wrote all the things of slope up here, I had the word grade, but I said grade is always given as a what? Percent. A percent. And so go ahead and divide those two numbers on a calculator. 94%. Okay. And you got 0 0.946 something, or no, 0 0.0. 0, 0 0.0946, right? 0.09469. Okay. Works for me. Okay. And that, if we move that two places, that's nine point, and we're gonna round this to this, 9.5% is the oh, rounded on that, yeah. okay? We cool? Has any of this been really difficult? Uh, no. no. Okay. Do you know who my favorite class is? Not us. Hopefully us. Not us? Who said not us? Rachel, remember that little thing about self-speak being positive? <laughs> Always say it's me. So I have a girl named Nicole, and Nicole, you know, she took her picture and, you know, put it in her mom's phone and then, and then, you know, put her name in there, and her name is Your Favorite Child, <laughs> you know? I mean, that's positive thinking right there, right? All the other kids are like, oh, yeah. Mom, 
she's your favorite? And she's like, she put that in there. <laughs> you know? but, uh, no, you did, Paul. Why am I not your favorite? Our positive thinking. Anyways, listen, you're my favorite class. And um, you're the most interactive, you're the most fun. Um, so listen, I want to do one extra thing for you today that none of the other classes got, and it will help you. Let's go to our homework page. If you're not there, try to pull it up real quick. That would be helpful to you. Okay. So while you're looking it up, I'm going to share with you something briefly. Uh, when's the last day to take the Chapter 2 test? Tomorrow. For the retake. Yeah, tomorrow by 11.59 p.m. If you're wanting or needing to retake it, uh, you have to meet with a tutor before you do it. you got to go over the problems you got wrong. Read the syllabus. It tells you what to do. Well, you know, tutoring is only open until 6, 6.30 tonight in the math lab. And tomorrow on Saturday, so from 11 to 2, something like that, maybe. 11 to 4. 11 to 4 now, yeah, that's a little bit more. So just make sure you get the help you need. Okay, next week we will be wrapping this chapter up on Monday. We'll teach the last material for this chapter on Monday. We'll have a review preparing us for the test on Wednesday. And then the test will be open Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday of next week. And we're going to take Friday off. Okay? Is that cool? Uh, are you talking about like this? A week from today. You will not have class. But you will have a test in Chapter 3. And we'll review for it Wednesday. And we're going to finish the chapter on Monday. Okay? All right. Last thing I want to show you guys. Is this the you... homework we just did? Or... What's that? Is this the homework we just did? No, this is our homework for today. This is our homework for today, 3.3. I want you to look at problem number 35. It says the population of Alaska is illustrated in the following graph. Find the rate of change. Now, you learned that rate of change means what? Slope. Slope, okay. So I would like somebody <coughs> to give me the first coordinates on here. There's a dot with coordinates. Hurry, give it to me. 1990. 1990 and? 500. 550,000. Okay, next one. 2003, 649,000. Okay. Y'all listen to me real quick here? Okay. There's a couple of these problems in here. Number 33 is about um, an office machine. And if you don't look at the y axis and the x axis labels, you'll get the problem wrong because if you look at the, the label on the number 33, it says value of copier in thousands. So in thousands of dollars. And so, but but the but the ordered pair, it'll look like it's just the number two, but it's actually, you know, two thousand dollars or three, and it's three thousand dollars. So you gotta you gotta convert that into thousands. But this problem here, number 35, okay, they're asking you for the rate of change on the population of Alaska. And all I'm telling you is, and then they have this line <coughs> here going like this. Well, <coughs> look at all your tools up here. What are they giving you? Well, they have, yeah, that's what you got to find. What are they giving you, though? Two, two, two order pairs. pairs. So what tool are you going to use? The Scenario one. one. Equals one. Okay. It's time to go. I just wanted to help you with that because that's actually the number one question students ask when we come back on Monday. Every, every semester, they're like, uh, we need to do number 35. And it's like, really? They gave you two points. I mean, I'm just telling you, it doesn't even matter if it's a word problem for them. It's got to be one of these three options. They either have to give you two points, the equation of a line, or they give you neither. And if they give you neither, you use rise over run. You guys cool? Yeah. All right, you have a good weekend. I'll see you next week without masks. So cool.